بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In the previous session, we concluded with the verses of Allah's glad tidings to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that he will not forget what was revealed to him. سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى. Allah continues saying, وَنُيَسِّرُكَ لِلْيُسْرَى And we will ease the way towards the state of ease. We will ease the way for you toward the state of ease. This is another, the scholars of Tafsir say, said that this is another, a second good news to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, another glad tidings to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that Allah azza wa jal will ease the way for him and for his nation to the path of Allah azza wa jal, to Jannah, to the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal, to the obedience of Allah azza wa jal. Everything is facilitated. Allah azza wa jal did not oblige us to do something that is beyond our ability. This is the nature of Islam. Islam is a very facilitated, very practical religion that copes with the reality of humans and the nature of humans. It's very simple to understand. One Lord, the objective is to obey Him and worship Him. He sends messages, He sent messengers and messengers explaining and clarifying and guiding and facilitated the path for those who wanted to accept and adhere. And this was the nature of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as stated by Aisha. Never was he given the choice between two matters except that he would choose the easier of the two so long as it was not a disobedience. To Allah Azza wa Jal. His life was a, a, an exa a living example of this. He never rejected any food, for example, on, on the level of eating and drinking. He never rejected any food. He never uh, requested a certain type of food. Whenever he was served food, he would uh, eat it. If he didn't desire it, he would just refrain without saying anything. Right? Unlike some husbands. What is this? Don't you know how to cook? What? Don't we have salt today? Right? The Prophet ﷺ was, was not like that. He was a, a, a leading example of ease in all his matters and all his aspects of life. ﷺ. Allah made this religion so easy. Listen to this narration that is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, whenever I command you to do something, then do as much as you can of it. That's why Ibn Taymiyyah said a principal rule. Said, الواجبات تسقط بالعجز Obligations are waived in cases of incapability. I'll give an example. You're obliged. One of the pillars of Salah is that you stand up. Correct? This is waived. You're, if you're unable to stand up, you can sit down. Well, what if you can't sit down? Then you can lie down. See how facilitated it is? To make worshipping Allah Azza wa easy, we will ease the way towards the state of ease. Everything is easy. Everything is facilitated in Islam. فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَى So remind, O oh Muhammad, if the reminder should benefit. Allah Azza wa Jal, who revealed the Qur'an upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and took upon himself the responsibility of preserving it so he will not forget it, 
maintaining it in his heart and mind so he won't forget it and has facilitated the matter for him and for his ummah has done so so he can rise and perform his main mission reminding people he is obliged sallallahu alaihi wasallam to remind to convey in all situations whenever he is able to and exert all efforts in fulfilling this mission of his sallallahu alaihi wasallam if the reminder should benefit a reminder is always beneficial but not always to everyone you will always find someone reminded and benefiting from the reminder many of them are absent minded see people with regards to reminders are different types some sit and leave and they leave the same state as they initially sat down in the gathering heard nothing because they were not listening they were just hearing what was said and they were not focused they had no objective some sit because they like the speaker not necessarily what he says some sit with the intention of benefiting so they benefit but they don't apply what they learned and heard in the reminder later so the reminder becomes something limited to the gathering and the best of all is the type who sits with the intention of benefiting learns memorizes and then goes out and applies this into his practical life one of the scholars was given lecture once and the the gathering was thousands of people he said i was not happy in my life about anything more than that lecture after the end of the lecture a very old man came to me and he said shaykh the only thing i understood from the one hour long lecture of yours is that i need to fear allah so i don't go to hell and i need to work hard on my myself so that i please allah and he admits me into jannah he said uncle if this is something that you really learned and benefited and will put to practice then this is the essence of the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now people with as we said with regards to uh, the re reception to the uh, reminder differ and therefore their behavior is different and the consequence of that at the end will also be different when they see Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah gives the details of the types of people with regards to reminders. سَيَذَّكَّرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى He who fears, fears Allah that is, will be reminded. He will benefit from the reminder. It will fill his heart with light and piety. It will make him more fearful of Allah Azza wa Jalla fears the anger of Allah, fears the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal because he knows that Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator and deserving of worship and obedience and that he did not create mankind for no purpose and that mankind will be held accountable for whatever he does in this short life. So he becomes fearful of Allah. So he is benefiting from that reminder. On the other hand, the second type, وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى But the wretched one will avoid it, meaning will ignore it, will not benefit from it. Regardless of what you tell him, what you say to him, right? He will not benefit. Once I was 
in uh, one of the, I was in Boston. Uh, and then after the, the lecture, uh, one of the brothers said, Sheikh, that man, they were collecting some funds for their masjid or something, I don't remember. He said, Sheikh, that man is very well off, he's very rich. Why don't you speak to him uh, to give donations to the cause? I said, fine, okay. So on the way, we were, now we're walking in, in the masjid, approaching that man. On the way, he said, but Sheikh, why don't you also remind him that he needs to pay his zakah? He doesn't pay his, his zakah. I said, he doesn't pay his obligatory zakah. And you want me to speak to him about giving optional donation? I said, is this correct? I said, of course not. I won't. I have to remind him with his obligation. This is a pillar of faith, of, of Islam. So I started talking and talking and talking and talking. And, and the guy was convinced. Finally, was convinced that he has to pay uh, his zakah. But then he said something. He said, I'm convinced. However, I have to go and speak to my wife and see what she says about me paying zakah. Now, what benefit was that reminder to the man? Some people hear you out, but they don't listen to what you're saying, and therefore they don't benefit from their reminder. And some are very arrogant to start with, mainly disbelievers, right? And they reject the message that you're conveying to them. So he is miserable in this life because his heart is lost between his desires and his lusts, right? Between his misguidance and his disbelief or disobedience, right? His main concern is this worldly life. And he bends over backwards, as we say, in order to uh, accumulate more and more of it. And he's always heedless of the hereafter. So he's miserable. And his misery will continue until he meets Allah or when he meets Allah Azza wa Jal and sees the consequence of this heedlessness that he had in his life. Now, what is the consequence of being a miserable, heedless person? Allah Azza wa says, الَّذِي يَصْلَ النَّارَ الْكُبْرَى ثُمَّ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَا He who will enter and burn in the greatest fire, wherein he will neither die nor live a desirable life. Some of the descriptions of this, of the consequence of rejecting the reminders. The, great, the greatest fire, it is great in its size, it's great in its duration, even if it's one day, because Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِنَّ يَوْمًا عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ كَأَلْفِ سَنَةٍ مِّمَّا تَعُدُّونَ One day in the scale of Allah is like a thousand years. One thousand years of that which you count, meaning of your worldly time. Even if that person is going to be punished for one single day, in the hereafter. You're talking about burning for a thousand years. So indeed, the hell fire is great in all aspects, in its heat. The Prophet ﷺ told us that the fire of the hell is 69 or 70 multiples of the heat of this worldly life, of the fire of this worldly life. The companion said, that, li that fire of the worldly life would have been enough, would have been sufficient as punishment. He وسلم, said, no, Allah increased it so that they taste 
is bitter punishment. We ask Allah's protection from that. So it's severe. It's painful. It's long. So he doesn't die in that fire. He doesn't die to put an end to this misery and, and suffering. And nor is his living is something that's desirable and joyful. When he lives, he's punished. And the psychological punishment of him knowing that he's not going to die adds insult to injury. Then Allah shifts to talk about the bright picture. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى he has certainly succeeded who purifies himself and glorifies the name of his Lord and prays. Success, facing misery and failure and punishment. This success is the result of the person who purifies himself. Who purifies himself, his heart from shirk, from disbelief, from pride and arrogance, from envy, right? And who purifies his behavior from ill actions and from disobedience. And he continuously mentions the name of Allah and glorifies the name of Allah Azza wa He's always mindful of the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal in his heart. And that reflects on his behavior. So he's always submissive to his Lord, especially when he prays. Some of us, as soon as they say Allahu Akbar in Salah, they have to the tendency of processing all tasks of their lives, all the tasks in that period of the salah. What his wife needs, what his professor asked him for, what his boss is requesting as far as reports and this and that, right? What his child wants, what his car needs, what is missing in the refrigerator, anything and everything comes to mind as soon as he says, Allahu Akbar. And then when he says, Assalamu Alaikum, his wife calls him on the way when he is about to reach the house. Did you bring milk? Oh, Subhanallah, I forgot it. I remembered it in Salah, but I forgot to go. Subhanallah. Sounds funny, but it's a very, very, very disturbing reality. It's very saddening, isn't it? That we don't hold Allah Azza wa Jal at high esteem by not glorifying Him in Salah. So the one who glorifies Allah Azza wa Jal at all times, that will reflect on his submissiveness to Allah Azza wa Jal in all his behavior and particularly during Salah. He will live his life with a life heart, a heart that's connected to Allah Azza wa Jal, stronger than the connection of many people to social media. Isn't it unfortunate that we don't spend with Allah Azza wa Jal as much as we spend with social media, whether on mobiles or laptops? You see people driving and responding, right? Some use one finger and they're very fast. They amaze me. They can type faster than I can talk. And when they reach a traffic light, wow, what a joy. It's like he entered Jannah, right? All the time. If you ask that very person, when was the last time that you spent half an hour with the Quran in your hand? 
he won't remember because it was too far back. If we deal with the Quran, if we deal with Allah Azza wa Jal, the way we deal with social media brothers and sisters, our situation will improve a lot. Our hearts will soften with Allah Azza wa Jal. The state of submissiveness is, will be something that we can actually achieve. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا Subhanallah. This is the answer. But you prefer the worldly life. Here Allah goes to speak to people about the reason behind their misery, the reason behind their heedlessness, and what makes them ignore or become indifferent or reject reminders altogether is that they favor this life, this worldly life, over the hereafter. What we, we were just saying. If we favor Allah Azza wa Jal over everything, our lives will be different. Allah will suffice us. Allah will improve our worldly life itself. Let alone improving hereafter, meaning making our end good and what we see when we see Him or when we meet Him, something that's pleasant. While the hereafter is better and more enduring. It's better in what it has in it. It's better in the duration of it. It's better in the bliss that Allah Azza wa has prepared for those who were obedient and keen on pleasing Him, submissive to Him. And you know, when you sit for a second here and just make a very simple comparison between the hereafter and the worldly life, it makes you feel stupid that you favor this life over the hereafter. It, it would make you conclude very fast that no sound-minded person would work or exert any effort to obtain this life while he knows what is awaiting him in the hereafter. Allah concludes the surah saying, "Inna hada la fi suhuf al ula, suhuf Ibrahim wa Musa." Indeed, this is mentioned in the former scriptures, the scriptures of Ibrahim and Musa. This is to indicate that this call, this faith, the belief in one in one deity, Allah alone, and Him alone deserving the worship. This is something that is old from the time Allah Azza wa started revealing to Ibrahim and to Musa, alayhim as salatu was The fact that when you purify yourself, you purify, you purify your heart, you will succeed, is something that is mentioned there. And the fact that some people choose the wrong choice or make the wrong choice by favoring this life over the hereafter was also mentioned in these earlier scriptures. To say that the truth is one, faith is one and it's all connected throughout the messengers, and in all messages, and that the source, the reason behind that is that the source is one. It is the Creator who is one, who created everything, who sent all of them, and He sent down all these divine messages. Rabbika al-A'la, the exalted Lord, who created and proportioned and facilitated the path towards the state of ease, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst the heedful who always remember, benefit from reminders, and put that to practice, and ask Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us reach the state of submissiveness to Him, so that we become amongst the successful. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum.